Canyon has released a brand new version of their Spectral Trail Bike ready for 2021. It's a carbon fibre 150mm bike with a range of different travel options up front and build kits along the way. It's a whole new platform as well because Canyon have decided that 29 inch wheels are the way forward for trail bikes. If you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to like and subscribe and click the little bell icon so that every time we upload a new video, you get a notification. Canyon want the Spectral to be that one bike that does it all. So it's got to be capable of doing those long rides in the mountains with big pedaling sections, but it's also got to be super capable when it's pointing right back down the hill. The Spectral isn't an enduro bike, however, it does need to have those capabilities because the general do-it-all rider is looking for a bike that is very, very capable on more technical terrain. This has led Canyon to build a 150mm 29er, moving away from that 650b wheel size. This, they say, makes the bike more capable, it's more stable, it's smoother, it corners better and helps you carry more speed too. It almost goes without saying that the geometry of the bike is also being shifted in that direction too, with longer reaches, slacker head angles, steeper seat angles, lower BBs, and generally speaking, a bike that's much more confident and happy when you're pointing down steep trails. However, along with wanting to make the Spectral even more capable, they did want to retain the feel of the previous Spectral, which, generally speaking, was very poppy, very agile, and a very fun bike to ride. If you look in the video description, you'll find a link to the review of the previous generation Spectral with 27.5 inch wheels that I did last year. Now, that bike did have some geometry issues. I felt it was a little short and a little tall, and that's something that has been addressed with this latest generation bike. However, as I said, Canyon wanted to maintain the poppy, agile feel of that bike and give it extra capability too, thanks to those 29 inch wheels and revised geometry. So let's look at this brand new frame from Canyon. Now this is obviously a 29er frame, so it has been built from the ground up rather than taking the previous generation and stretching it out. Revisions to this bike mean that it is about 200 grams lighter than the previous version of the bike, which is pretty good considering they've also increased stiffness in some key areas. Most of the stiffness increases and thus areas which actually have grown in weight come in the lower part of the bike. What it means though is that they've been able to lighten the top end of the bike, shifting the overall weight balance of the bike a little bit lower down in the chassis, which is no bad thing. Canyon have looked at things like the tube profiles, the shaping of the tube, especially the down tube, with less of a curve down towards its belly, along with a one-piece seat stay section, including a bridge in front of the rear wheel. This is all there to sort of save weight, but increase stiffness and increase performance where it matters. Canyon categorized their frames on a one to five scale, with the most extreme bikes such as the Sender Downhill Bike, a category five, and some of their cross-country bikes lower down that scale. Now the Strive is a category four bike, and that means it's passed their in-house testing for EWS racing. While this isn't an Enduro race bike, it has been tested to those protocols to make sure that it has that stiffness, that strength, and that durability that you want from a big hit heavy duty bike. Canyon have clearly thought hard about the actual design of the frame, the little features here and there, and have had input from their World Cup mechanics along the way too. Something that we saw first with the sender, we're now seeing here on the Spectral, and that's the ability to strip the entire suspension linkage from one side of the bike, save for that drive side chainstay pivot. So all the bolts are accessed from this back side of the bike. It just makes life a little bit easier. You'll also find that the main pivots are all double sealed to give extra durability. One of the other nice touches of this frame is that the pivot bolts go into removable inserts in the frame. This means that if you strip a thread or misalign a bolt when you're putting it back together again, you're not gonna damage the actual frame, just the insert into the back of the pivot. To keep lines nice and clean, there is fully guided internal cable routing from front to back. Some of the other bikes in the range have featured a little removable down tube protector plate, which also housed in like a little groove the cables. Now, personally, I thought this was a great idea. However, they sort of decided that having spent so much time engineering the frame to make sure that stiffness to weight and the tube profiles were just right, they wanted to make sure it was like a really clean sort of process all the way through front to back. So they've gone internal instead of this bolt-on plate. In a nod to home mechanics, we also see a threaded bottom bracket, which personally I am a big fan of. And another nice little touch is that there are optional, addable ISCG 05 mounts that effectively clamp around that bottom bracket shell. 
Now this means that they're not on the bike, it is an added extra, but what it also means is that there's an extra sort of bit of protection from damage on a big hit. It's removable if it gets damaged, and also the idea is that if you do take a big hit on it, it can kind of slip instead of damaging the internal structure of the frame. Now I can't remember all the geometry figures of this bike, so I'm going to read them out from my trusty little phone, which has a geometry chart on it. So Canyon has decided that they wanted a high and a low setting for this bike. Now, I think most people are just going to stick it in a low setting and leave it there. But they wanted to have that high setting there just to raise the BB, give slightly steeper angles for those who like riding technical uphill challenges. If you're into that, great. However, I think most people are going to leave it in that low setting. So this is the geometry figures for a size large 29 with a 150 mil fork. And I'll talk about that in a minute. So a size large has a 460 millimeter seat tube, and that's about 20 mil shorter than the previous generation bike. We're also seeing a slightly shorter front end with 115 mil in the head tube for a size large. When it comes to reach, the large has a 485 millimeter reach, which is actually really rather long, especially considering the seat angle, which is pretty darn steep. That comes in at 76.5 degrees in its low setting or 77 degrees in the high setting. This is matched to a 64.5 degree head angle in low or 65 degrees in high. The chainstay is a 437 mil long, which is fairly short for a 29er, while the stack comes in at 628 millimeters. Small and medium frames come with a 150 mil dropper, while large and extra large get 170 mil dropper posts. And can you say that the seat posts can be slammed in those frames without any interruption from the main pivot? Now it might be worth noting that if you aren't a fan of 29ers, they are actually keeping the 27.5 bike in their range. This comes in both alloy and carbon versions and they've slightly updated colours and specs for 2021, but generally speaking the 29er is obviously the focus for them going forwards. So now we've talked about the geometry, we'll very quickly talk about the spec options on the bike. Now there are going to be four models of the Spectral in 2021 in the Carbon 29er and they have split them into two different camps. There's a Fox and Shimano camp and a full SRAM camp with RockShox suspension and SRAM gears. Now the SRAM camp, they get 150mm pikes on the front with 150mm at the back and those SRAM gears. Whereas if you go for a Fox, you get a Fox 36 with 160mm of travel at the front and a 150mm back end. Basically, if you want a slightly burlier build, go for the Fox options. If you want a more trail orientated build, you're probably going to look towards the SRAM versions of the bikes. However, if you want full specs and full international pricing, check out bikeradar.com. There's a link in the description to the full news story about the new Spectral. Now, if you are interested in a slightly burlier build, you might want to look at the Spectral 29 CF 8.0, and that comes with Fox suspension and 160 mil at front. That gets you a Fox 36 Performance Elite fork with a Grip 2 damper and a Fox DPX2 Performance Elite shock. And as it happens, this is the bike here. You get a Shimano XT drivetrain with the four pot brakes and a pair of DT Swiss XM 1700 wheels. For full specs, do check out bikeradar.com though. When it comes to the suspension on this bike, Canyon have used their triple phase suspension across their range for a little while now. And the idea is to have a very supple early stroke, a supportive mid stroke, and then plenty of progression towards the end to give lots of control when you're bottoming the bike out. Now they have increased the progression of the suspension by about 4 percentage points from about 25% to 29% right towards the end of its travels to give that extra control on bigger hits. But they've also been working to make sure that the bike is plenty supple enough but also pedals very effectively too. When it comes to designing suspension kinematics for a trail bike it's quite a tricky proposition. You've got to balance the demands of pedaling efficiency with that of comfort and control especially on bigger hits. To increase efficiency, generally speaking, you want to increase the anti-squat, i.e. reducing the impact of pedalling on the suspension's movement. However, the impact of doing this is that you get this thing called pedal kickback. So as the suspension travels through its motions, it pulls the pedals back and, and that sort of makes the suspension not work very well and can give a funny feeling through the pedals. So Canyon have designed their kinematics to effectively have the early portion of the stroke good for pedalling and then the impact of those bigger impacts on the cranks reducing through its travel, certainly compared to the previous generation of the bike. 
As the bike goes deeper into its travel and certainly past around 90mm of that 150mm, the anti-squat figures drop off dramatically on this generation of bike. That means that when you get deep in tra travel, there's less pedal kickback, meaning a smoother feel and less of a jarring, harsh feel through that back end. So those are all the facts, figures, different models, all the information that you kind of need to know about the Spectral. But I guess the most important thing is how it actually rides. Now, as often happens, there isn't actually a huge amount of time between getting the bike and going live on YouTube. So I've actually only managed to ride the bike once. So these are very much initial first ride impressions. There will be a full review for Bike Radar as soon as I've spent more time out in the woods riding the bike. As with most days on the bike, the ride started with a bit of a climb. And that anti-squat has definitely been increased a little bit. Now the previous Spectral did pedal pretty well, however it is noticeable just how stable this bike felt under power. On fire road drags, up steeper climbs as well, it felt very composed, very efficient and it didn't feel too wallowy at all. When I do my bike testing I often do two bikes on the same day so I can do a bit of back to back. The other bike was a slightly longer travel, slightly more aggressive bike but it was noticeable just how much better this bike pedaled than the other bike I was riding. With the suspension remaining nice and static under pedaling loads and with a fairly short back end, it felt really easy to sort of pick the front end up and hoik it round tight switchback climbs and over sort of steps and lumps along the way too. Traction is reasonable, although obviously if you do increase the anti-squat so the suspension remains more static under power, you can lose some of that sensitivity on slightly rougher, looser climbs. That said, there's plenty of grip from that rear tyre and I didn't really face any particular issues on any of the climbs I did yesterday when riding it. On those slightly flatter tracks, it does pedal very well as mentioned in the climbing section of this review. That means that you can put those little bursts of power down, those little spurts, and it reacts very quickly to those. There's still enough sort of suppleness in that back end though to make sure that if you are rattling over the roots, it doesn't feel too uncomfortable. There isn't too much feedback through the pedals either. One of the things we've often found with canyons of recent years is that the rear suspension is actually really, really good on descents. And that fortunately has carried through to this generation of the Spectral. When it comes to hitting those higher speed berms and G outs, it does feel like there is ample mid-stroke support. And if you really push it hard, it doesn't bottom out harshly at all. In fact, the transition right towards the end of its travel is very, very smooth. This means that the bike just feels incredibly composed at that back end. And I think that's also aided by those bigger wheels, which does help smooth everything out that little bit extra over the smaller 27.5 inch wheels of the previous version. Now I haven't had a chance to test this bike on extra long descents and that's where something like the piggyback shock really might come into its own. The reason for having a piggyback is that you get extra oil volume. Extra oil volume means that it stays at a more consistent temperature over longer descents, meaning that the damping doesn't change in feel on those longer tracks. If you are looking for a slightly burlier version of the bike, I think actually going for this Fox spec is a really good idea. 160mm of travel up front gives you that little bit extra give and that 36 chassis is very stout, it's very controlled. If you are the type of rider for example that wants to go to the Alps with your trail bike, I think this would be a little great option. However, if you're more into those trail centre days or if you're into longer rides in the hills, maybe that slightly lighter, slightly more trail orientated RockShox build would be a good option. When it comes to the geometry, the differences between this version of the bike and the previous one is actually really quite stark. Having a shorter seat tube means you feel much more in the bike, it doesn't feel quite so perched and that's reflected with the front end too. I found it a little bit too high previously, likewise with the seat tube, and you just sort of felt that you are kind of on top of the bike. Now, I did notice that the bottom bracket is fairly low, I had a few pedal strikes on some of the more pedally tracks, especially those with a lot of rocks and little humps and lumps along the way. You can ride around that and I think generally speaking a lower bottom bracket is a good thing but just be aware that even with the 170mm cranks you might get a few extra pedal strikes with this bike. When it came to going absolutely full chat the Spectral performed really well. I took it to some trails that I ride fairly regularly and while the conditions were great it was sort of that beautiful tacky post rain dirt I set a number of PRs on this bike down some of my favourite tracks and that's having rhythm as well on enduro bikes. So they have obviously built a bike that feels at least very fast. As I said, I've spent very limited time on the Spectral so far. So do keep an eye on bikeradar.com for a more fleshed out review at least in the coming weeks. However, first impressions do count and I certainly came away having loved my day riding the Spectral. 
it does feel like the improvements to the geometry and to the suspension have made it even more capable. It pedals well and it certainly descends very well too. Canyon designed the Spectral to be a true do-it-all bike. So can one bike replace a whole fleet of others? Let me know what you think in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and click the little bell icon so that every time we upload a new video, you get a notification.